What's up, everybody? Hey, How are you doing, tonight, Andy? I'm doing outstanding. I'm I'm ready to get educated. You know this 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 right here. These are these are two legends that we have on tonight. So you're gonna have so much education. You're gonna you you just gonna you, you, you might grow some hair tonight. Actually, highly. <laughs> for for what it's worth, I'm a legend in my own mind. So uh, I'm, I'm in good company. So for I, sure. I, Want to thank everyone for coming on tonight. Um, Renee Man for What's Your Passion, What's Your Passion podcast. So our podcast is basically every week. It's all about really bringing new information, innovative ideas, um, guest speakers that, that really just have some really great things going on. And these are two individuals who I'm partnered with, which I'm really excited about. Ed Colom um, has been in the truck uh, casino video video gaming industry for several years. Um, and we have some different things we're working on with the EV charging stations and also truck parking. And we partner with a gentleman, Jim Coffrin. Jim Coffrin has I mean, just, just been in the industry for over 40 years, a veteran in the transportation industry and visionary of leveraging technology to produce analytical management systems. And I can go on and on, but we're going to let Jim kind of share with you his expertise. But Jim is really just really the, the, the part that to this puzzle of the truck parking solutions that we're um, having across the country, Jim and Ed are going to go over some different things. And we're going to share some ideas of what we're working on currently and how we're going to uh, really kind of change the truck parking industry for the better. So Ed, Jim, I thank you both for being on tonight and Andy for helping me kind of put this podcast together every week. So thank I guess let's have. start off with, I mean, which um, Jim, Ed, do you want to start off tonight with kind of giving a little bit of your background and where we are? Sure. Um, thanks, uh, uh, Renee. And I'm going to stop saying. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I know five five dollars an um. So, uh, Renee, to me. Yeah, this we wanted to chat tonight about FinPark and ProPark. Uh, the app writer, the FinPark app, is a creation of Jim Coffrin and his team at Viha. And so we are utilizing the FinPark app across the country to, to mobilize trucks into spaces at truck stops. So the overall theory is we're sort of like Expedia for truck drivers. Basically, a driver is traveling from point A to point B. They can only drive for 14 hours a day. They, after so many hours, they need to shut it down. And we provide a safe solution for the driver to find a reserved parking spot anywhere in the USA where we have partnered lots. So a driver's uh, driving down the highway, he has an app, he goes to the app, he searches via Google geofencing and so forth, and I'll let Jim cover that. And the driver can reserve a spot, pull in a spot for 20, 24, 36, 48 a week. Uh, the, the parking lot is compensated through a program where we do a rev share. Driver pays a fee. We share part of the revenue with the truck parking lot. Uh, for, the, for the truck parking lot owner, it's a great revenue source because it's our trucks on our app. So for most of the time, it may be a truck they've never seen before. So for a guy who operated truck stops throughout Louisiana, this is perfect for for folks like us, because we get a new customer, we sell fuel, we can sell food, showers. Uh, if you're in the gaming space, maybe the driver will go into your casino. But at the end of the day, you're driving traffic into your parking lot that you probably would not have seen. So FinPark uh, is providing that service to drivers across the country today. So that's my take on it. I thought maybe we could throw it over to Jim. Uh, and, and let Jim take it from here regarding the app, his experience, uh, what's the, what was the thought behind the app and how we get to where we are today. Sure. Appreciate it. And Renee, thank you. Appreciate it. It's an honor to be on your show tonight. Uh, yeah, just as Ed was saying, um, you know, I've been in trucking 40 years. My father was uh, had a general sales manager for one of the largest Navistar truck groups in the country. I grew up in the Midwest, you know, kind of the heart and soul of 
trucking. But, um, you know, it, if you take the subject of parking, you go back and look at like the, the, the big um, entities, the trade shows, you know, everybody talks about parking and the driver and driver retention. Parking's been an issue for over 20 years. It's been the number, you know, if not three to five topic to all drivers that are professional truck drivers over the road for literally decades now. And most people probably don't realize this, but if you go back to 2016, 2017, the first monetized marketplace for truck parking, the pay for parking space was created. So this is actually a relatively new market to the industry. We're only talking, um, you know, six to eight years where this has been productized. So there were, there were two guys that got into the space early on and uh, those original solutions have evolved. And actually the, the first couple are, are gone today. Um, you see a lot of activity in the space, but you know, a couple of things have really kind of the, all the stars aligning. You had years ago, uh, regulatory issues, right? The driver's hours of service, what he's legally able to do. That forced, uh, when we went to ELD mandates back in, uh, you know, the 2010 to 2014 range, we saw this transition where the professional truck driver was limited in the hours of service. And what happened was as they changed those laws, there was a tremendous redesign in the network. Uh, if you look at where distribution centers, right, where our goods and services that we get are distributed from, those nodes, those, that industry network has been constantly re-engineered. And now you look at the advent of the mandates to go to electrical vehicles. As that you know, capacity for these vehicles, particularly in the heavy duty space, is changing, you're seeing pressures to re-engineer the infrastructure that it's gonna enable electrification of vehicles. And so what's happening now is you're seeing a re-engineering of where freight is being brought in. Just look at the uh, COVID issues and the supply chain disruptions. A huge portion of the freight that used to come off the West Coast got shifted to the East Coast. And now they're looking at, well, what's happening? Look at the disruption in, in Baltimore. Um, as the, the just immense amount of products and services that come from other countries that come from China and come into the United States, the the truck, you know, is we say 95% of everything you touch, everything you consume is on a truck at some point. But what's happening is, is how those trucks operate and where they're operating, where those drivers need to find parking is evolving every day. And now with the electrification, and you look at where do you put a charging station, right? Where do you build out this network? So it's a really exciting time in the industry night right now. And we're doing a complete rewrite of how do we provide safe, efficient uh, parking and particularly secured parking. I don't know if people realize this, but, um, you know, after 9-11, a couple of things happened. There was a complete uh rewrite legislatively and as far as best practices of how do we protect the supply chain? So most people don't realize anything that is food-based product is, is mandated to be in a no touch freight situation. And so the driver and the professional driver that's out there, the, how they run their business is changing every day. And so that's what we're seeing. And it's a very, very exciting time in the industry. Um, Andy, if you do you have uh, one of the slides that can kind of bring up what the FinPark app looks like? Yes, sir. If you can yeah. pop that up, and then so so Jim, where 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 you seeing when you you started out with when you you're the one who kind of created the, the um, app, I believe, correct? 
Yeah, I was actually an alpha customer of a couple of the the folks that started the business. And then uh, we started about a year ago and uh, we did a complete 2.0 rewrite. So this is a ground up complete rebuild and it's basically a a complete ERP system. Uh, But yes, I'm the chief architect of the product. And when, when uh, based off of what my understanding is with Ed, since I've been working with y'all on this project, is that y'all have um, locations that are gas stations across the country um, or truck stops that basically have spaces. And when y'all created this app, it's basically an opportunity where you can go to that that location and say, okay, if we can reserve a couple of spots, um, our drivers don't know where your gas station is or your location. But when they start looking on the app, now we can drive, like like Ed says, we drive dead presidents to your business, right? <laughs> um, so basically, we know our, we're, we're driving business to a location that the truck, your average truck driver might not even know about because it's not whatever, the, the, it's not on. But on this feature, they can see if there's showers, restrooms, food, amenities there. Is that correct? Yes. And and. You know, it's an interesting thing. Um, a lot of the original product years ago um, were built on, you know, kind of static website, low code type technologies. Think of what we know today as like a typical spin up a quick shopping cart, right? So a lot of the original product was I have one thing to sell, like one daily opportunity. Uh, if you go to an airport, right, a park and ride, and I want to go, the terms and conditions are, I can sell you one day, you rent a spot for a day. So what we've done is we looked at what are the real components of the system? So for an asset owner, if you're, you know, an investor and you're looking for a real estate play, if you're a current operator in the pay for parking space, Hmm. you have kind of four different functions that you need to work on. One is how do I manage my asset? How do I publish and make available uh, and market my parking location. And what we've done is we've tried to really look at it from a fresh new approach and say, what's important to the user, right? We're dealing with commercial drivers. We're, we're dealing with service vehicles. And so we said, how do we speak the language of the professional truck driver? And so we built things like multiple dynamic pricing. The original was I can rent you today. Today, our system is fully configurable. So if you want to rent long-term rental, a a weekly or a monthly, or let's say an annual um, rental, we can do that. If you want to separate, for example, container storage or machinery storage, we can set up different services. So you can be in the business of storage or you can be in the business of transient parking. And then we give them the ability to be flexible in how they rate those So I can sell a duration instead of a pure hourly basis. I can sell a day rate. I can sell a 12 hour rate for a driver that needs to do a reset. I can sell a 36 hour duration for a driver that needs to do what we call a a reset. So that's really what we try to do. And then, as you said, we brought in things like amenities. So, you know, in most navigation apps today, I can search by proximity or I can search by look along the route. And we even brought in things, for example, like how many hours of drive time do I still have? If a driver has the ability to legally drive 11 hours today, where is he right now and where is he going? And we built search algorithms to allow that driver to say, I'm going from Dallas to Houston. How far can I get along that route? We even give them the ability to say, by the way, I want to fuel before I park. So let me back up the time to fuel and I can still extend my route as far as possible and then find the optimal place to park. And I know, I know, I know um, Ed uses Expedia for truck parking. I consider it kind of like an Airbnb for truck parking. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's kind of like you're, you, you know where you're going and you're going in that direction and I, I, that's the way I kind of look at it. Is it is very very exciting. It, it's like an Airbnb for park, for truck parkers. And, um, and as Ed was mentioning, you know, some of the other things we really thought about is we we knew that for operators, you know, a lot of folks. Again, there's institutional investors, there's private equity, 
today that are looking for long-term real estate plays. And they say, you know, but I don't know trucking and, and I don't want to deal with the business of parking. So we build essentially a complete ERP system. The other components, we can list those assets, we can rate them, but then we have a complete reservation management system. A lot of the folks in the industry, they have apps, but we, we consider them glorified phone books. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you where a spot is. Our system is completely integrated. So we do all the billing and the collection. And then we also do the remittance back to the operator in mm -hmm. a seamless system, 100% transparent, every single transaction to the penny down to the, we integrated uh, Avalara tax services so that every single retail sale that we make, we know that we're not going to get into sales tax audit problems down the road. So it's really a, a well thought out, robust product built on a marketplace app that is the leading technology of today. You know, we could run a U-Haul system. We could run a Grubhub. We could run uh, a Yelp on the framework, but it's, it's modern day technology, but built for the business of running paid for parking for the transportation and, and logistics industry. Wow. Renee, on the issue that you brought up of lots and real estate play, that's yeah. that's a big part of what our ultimate, uh, when you think about Pro Park, powered by yeah. Fin Park, we see this as an effort where we uh, work to build a parking lot inventory as we know it currently with, with existing facilities that are truck stops and so forth. But moreover, as Jim was saying, there's a huge play right now on the real estate side on developing lots. Uh, yeah, yeah. There is a shortage of parking, safe, secure parking throughout the country. And so this is a part of what we think about on a daily basis is not only are we driving the retail side of the marketplace with parking lots and then the other side with truck drivers, but moreover, we're consistently and constantly looking for real estate plays because you can you can have a long term play on real estate, which is a very easy construction process. It's a parking lot, it's fencing, it's a modular shower building, two thousand square feet, you know, a gated system. So this is a, a burgeoning market, and we feel that the Fin Park app is heads and you know heads and shoulder shoulders and heads above what the what the competition is currently because of the, the the aspects of amenities you know drivers that are pulled in the parking lot they may need to go to cvs this app allows the parking lot owner the truck stop owner to populate into his profile he or she's profile meaning the truck stop profile what's close to them what images so when a driver pulls up they see an image of the truck stop so they already visually oriented to the location not only are they following a map, of course, right? But they see it. Uh, and this is a very, especially at night when you're approaching into a place, uh, this is a good feature where you can have these amenities put into a profile. Yeah, you don't think of things like, you know, the driver, some drivers are out six, eight weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. And so they are they never get back the hour they can't drive. So legally, mm -hmm. they will never, they, you and I, we can miss a paycheck, take a day off, and we will never miss the opportunity to go make it up an extra project overtime. A driver can never make up the paycheck they miss. So <laughs> planning and optimization of their route and how they actually run their business is really important. A couple of other things that are just seem novel, but things like, um, you know, because some of the original frameworks only rented for a day at a time, you have a moral and ethical dilemma driver as soon as he starts driving he's automatically starting his clock for the next day and so what if his load that he's planned on at 10 o'clock in the morning is not ready so he has to make an, a, an ethical decision do i rent for a whole nother day or do i stick around and see if somebody kicks me out so we did things like being able to give the driver the ability to extend an appointment for a few hours and giving the owner the flexibility to configure how they want to do business you know real simple things but there's so many aspects the driver that needs to 
stop by a post office. He needs to get a prescription filled. Mm-hmm. He needs to get his medical DOT uh, redone, his you know physical exam. Maybe he needs to run by in a bank or something. So we give the operator the ability to promote what really is the context that driver is going to be parking in. What can they do? Is there a restaurant on site? Can I go have somebody bring me food? Lots of things like that. We focus particularly on high value loads and secured parking because that's a really big deal. You know, uh, theft and cargo theft is, is just an enormous issue in the industry. So we give those operators the ability to make a distinguishment. This is a secured facility. It's fully gated. It has controlled access. Others have man guards on site, you know, and if you're running a $5 million load of iPad or iPads or phones, and uh, you know, you go to the big expedited guys of the world, they're going to say, if I catch that load outside of a secured facility, your $20 million contract with us is gone. Wow. So we give them the ability to look at how do we integrate with their dispatch software? How do we work with the big brokerage houses with 600,000 loads sitting on a board? And we say, here's how you can match those freight loads with the planned parking. You know, the average driver, we've done some anecdotal studies. If they go to a market where there's not parking, they could travel for an hour looking for a place to park. And so they're losing revenue to the truck. They're losing uh, compliance to their hours. So it's, it's a really big topic for, for drivers. No, I mean, I, I do a lot of driving with my, uh, I do transportation for crew changes for the um, boats on the rivers. Right. And so I'm on the road sometimes. 100% regulated. Every, every stop, every turn yeah. is regulated and where you're going. Yeah. Planning is everything in your business. Yeah. And I, I see, I see on the, you know, interstates at late nights, especially, I see them lined up on the side of the road. Their the loves or the pit pilots might be just overcrowded. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just kind of piled out of there. So when it comes down like to what our idea is, is to build these, um, these nice gated, are there a lot of those across the country or is it not that prevalent yet? Um, to not nearly as prevalent. They say about 20% of the capacity of the daily parking mm-hmm. is actually available in the market. Wow. And that's a big issue. And, I, and I'll tell you, you know, I grew up in equipment building trucks and working for some of the largest fleets in the country and some of the biggest, you know, dispatch software telematics guys. And as a VP of maintenance, I used to buy hundreds of trucks a year, hundreds of trailers. And I made a promise to myself, you know, I led with technology. I was one of the first guys to go 100 percent all disc brakes around the truck and the trailer. Wow. You say, why would you do that, Jim? Because in a fleet of hundreds or thousands of drivers, I had drivers that were going across the Rockies. They're coming out of Memphis, going across to the East Coast, going through the gap into Virginia. And I had at least one or two drivers a week that went for the big ride downhill and mm-hmm. they lost their brakes. Mm-hmm. So you see those exit ramps and the guy... I woke up every day and said, I don't ever want to be the guy that said my equipment failed and that driver lost their life. So let me tell you a parking example. It was with a very prominent fleet. Folks that know my background could tell you who that fleet was. We had a driver that was moving freight out of the Midwest on a Sunday night. He positioned a load to go in and deliver Monday morning in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And so he got there a couple hours early from his appointment. And in New Jersey, you see the little off ramps and then you see the cable kind of fences that go down the side of the highway. Mm-hmm. There was an area there where a driver had parked about one, two in the morning. And he was legal, safely parked. Three in the morning, a drunk driver in a Corvette mm-hmm. was coming home from the bar, switched three lanes, ended up under the back end of that trailer that was parked. That driver had, I believe it was over 3 million miles, if not 5 million. He had been in the industry, never had an accident. And his trailer was sitting there and that gentleman that was in that car drunk ran underneath that trailer, decapitated himself. That driver walked away from the industry, not being able to live with himself. What he didn't know 
was down the road to the left, a quarter mile down the road, there were safe mm -hmm. haven parking that he was not aware of. Mm -hmm. And drivers make a decision every single day. Where do I stop? Where do I park? Am I making the right decision? In an industry that is so litigious, that trucking company, that driver is always going to be the bad guy. And he did nothing wrong, but he couldn't live with himself. And he walked away from the industry. So parking is a big deal. Really right, big deal. Right. Well, and I know when we first started this, I know there was a story about, I think it was a, it was a, it was an individual who was murdered because he was robbed for seven dollars. Is that is that right, Ed? Something. Yeah. So that's Jason's law. Jason was a driver. Uh, needed a place to to shut it down. Was waiting to unload. Was in a sort of a back lot area of a dispatch center. He had. Uh, Got in the back, take a nap, uh, a vagrant walked by, saw some cash on the dashboard, broke into the cab, uh, ended up killing Jason and um, stole seven dollars. So a man lost his life for seven dollars. His wife went on to really lobby Congress to change the laws, which state by state they have Jason's law now, which basically is a law to, pr to promote safe spot safe parking for drivers uh as they you know just it's nationwide but yeah jason's law renee um you know one one of the things that this app does renee is and this is something that jim can expand on but one of the things this app does is it it, it saves a lot of cost in drivers searching for spots uh, right. folks don't think about the actual cost of a driver searching for a spot it's getting close to having to shut down. The lots are full. He's searching for a spot. Every mile he goes, he's spending money. So, Jim, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, what the cost per hour is for a driver to Yeah, operate. you know, we used, we used to say between the truck and the fuel and the maintenance and the capital equipment and all that, um, <laughs> you know, we used to say about 75 to 95 cents uh, a mile to the truck. Now it's probably about a buck 35, buck 45 mm -hmm. a mile to the truck. So a driver that's wandering around town, you know, the average truck, particularly in the over the road space, travels about 57 miles per hour. That's from start and stop, from getting up in the morning, pulling the first gear to going about 57 miles per hour. So if a truck is developing, let's say a dollar an hour in gross margin, you know, you, that truck on highway would have gone in an hour 57 miles. So, mm -hmm. You know, just that 50 to $80 in wasted time looking for parking adds up to a 500 truck fleet. We did a study years ago to a 500 truck fleet, the average gross margin to a fleet. If you could find five minutes a day, what we call line haul miles, that's freight on the back of a driver earning revenue for hauling freight. Five minutes a day per truck is worth $2 million to a 500 truck fleet. That five mm. minutes a day. Wow. So you go into these markets where there's just all this congestion. Uh, we did a study once, just the impact on fuel economy, for example. Um, if I'm going down the highway and I forget a, my coffee or a pack of smokes, I get down the exit ramp, I turn around and I simply pull in and find a place to park. I walk in, go get a coffee, come back, get my truck, get back up to highway speed. I will lose over 35 minutes in a gallon of fuel just to stop that truck and slow its momentum down and then to get it going again. So we don't realize, we think of parking as just something we do every day, but to a professional driver that's optimizing their route planning, a small fleet, let's say they can't invest in a lot of routing technology and things, mm -hmm. uh, right. you know, they may get seven, 8,000 miles a month per truck, but to the best operators that use planning tools and routing tools and really work on their route line, the best trucks can legally do over 13,000 miles a month. It's mm -hmm. incredibly operationally leveraged. And so parking is always kind of, Years ago, parking was looked at. You talk to the larger fleets and they say, hey, it's a driver problem and we support them. 
but we're not going to deal with it. Okay. Times are different today. Times are different. One of the things we did in the platform was we have a complete module. We call it Fin Park Reserve. We just released an alpha version of it, but it allows a fleet manager, whether it's a private fleet, whether it's a large over the road, you know, national fleet enterprise level, that driver manager can look out and say, here's my 50 drivers. Here's my 40 drivers. Let me make sure everybody I'm looking at where they're going, where their route lines are, what kind of freight they're hauling. And they can actually go secure parking on behalf of the driver. And then we give billing scenarios where they can think of like a Hertz or an Avis or something, a corporate billing code. So we have the ability to send it to the individual driver, <laughs> or we have the ability to build directly to the fleet's direct account. And we have a full auditing and a process for tying all that out. But again, Okay. Our system where we believe we have a tremendous competitive advantage is 30, 40 years in the industry, building solutions, working with the best software, the best TMS, the dispatch software, understanding how the professional driver really runs their business. So now we can inform and we can help those operators really serve that national fleet. So that's where the challenges are. Um, Andy, pop up some of the, the pitch deck that we have so we, we can kind of walk through some of those. Uh, we have some pictures, Jim, that um, – let's see. So so basically when they when, when you go to um, – which we're in the process of doing pro part, but – so pop up ne the next um, – next picture, Andy? Mm-hmm. So on this, on this one right here, this is this is basically how many people work in the U.S. trucking industry. 3.5 million Americans make a living as truck drivers. 7 million people employed by the trucking industry. Yeah. And so, you know, we're talking about, again, we're, we're focused on that class six to eight. But even, you know, for example, for the operators, we have operators that have, uh, you know, small quarter acre lot and they want to monetize for white van, you know, service industries, the, mm -hmm. the plumber, a cable company. Mm -hmm. uh, we often have operators, you know, right now there's a lot of shift coming out of Laredo and we'll have large fleets that say, look, I got a book of business and this is a seasonal piece of business. I need to go move 200 trucks into this area. Can you find us weekly or monthly parking for 200 trucks? So sometimes these large fleets will come in and they will buy up all the capacity on these mid to long term deals. And our system will keep track of those. And if we have the visibility, what transient capacity, we're still booked that transient capacity, but we can also handle the long term parking as well. And some folks, you know, they have a blended mix. We also can do what we call a generic or a general parking spot, think of a concert ticket, standing room only kind of generic seat, or I can do reserve name space and our system will allow them to configure their spaces either way. <clears throat> Renee, that's that's one question we get asked a lot as the guys out marketing the app, yeah. how many parking spots do I need to allocate? <clears throat> you know, if I got 50 parking spots, in my lot, which are a lot of Louisiana market is 50 to 100 spots other than the majors, but the mom and pops in the industry, about 50 to 100 spots. So we, we, we don't ask anybody to give us all their spots. If they if they would like to dedicate their lot and run it all through the Fin Park app, that's, that's awesome. We love it. But at the end of the day, we could start small, 10, 20 spots. That's how I started when I got involved with this, with an app, uh, the predecessor app to Finn Park, we gave 20, 25 spots out the gate out of 125. And as Jim just said, we had long-term parking customers and short-term, short and we blended them in our lot. But you don't need to start with all your lot being managed by us. You can give us 10 to 20 spots. We suggest numbering those spots mainly because it keeps confusion out, but the app is designed where that's not necessary either. Because as Jim will tell folks in our demos, our system will only book 
what's available on the lot. So if you give us 20 spots on your lot and we have 20 trucks reserved into your lot, booking's going to shut down because the system is already set to not go more than 20. So we can put a lot of parameters so that the lot owner can do other things with monthlies, long terms, uh, storing trailers. Maybe there's, uh, as Jim was saying, light vehicles, uh, automobile, RVs, vans, service vehicles, right? So we can be very flexible on how we approach our customer side in regard to us driving traffic into those lots. So that's a very powerful aspect of what this app will do for the normal truck stop owner or, or lot owner for, you know, and that on for, you know, in that way. In that way. Yeah, re recently, we've seen some trends where some institutional investors, you know, really moved into the climate controlled storage space mm -hmm. and um, they did very well, but they wanted to exit that space. There's a lot of aggregation going on. So they step back and they said, boy, I've got to start all over. Um, you know, it's the old boat and RV storage or it's the machinery storage. And so we listened to them and said, we'll build you a configurable system where you can declare the service. Again, storage is different than transient parking. And then we give them the ability to configure those things. We also, which is unique, is we give those operators control in the system um, when I design management systems, I believe in what I call the single glass wall of the transaction. What that means is every stakeholder, whether it's an operator, you know, when you look at folks that want to get into the game, some folks are professional operators. That's all they want to do. And they'll control the operating management of the service. Others just want the real estate play. Some want to do all. And so we had to step back and say, you get to choose how you play in the marketplace. And then what do we need to do? So we brought in things like integrations. So we have an API hub. If you have a gate management system, or let's say you have a manual keypad, some folks have a QR code that you scan. Some have a code that they generate per transaction. Others, it's they refresh the codes once a week. So we built into the system the ability for the operator to run their entire business, load their bank accounts, we'll book all the reservations, we collect all the fees, we do all the reporting, and we deposit checks in the bank. Mm -hmm. And basically it's hands off. That's our goal is that we have a fully scalable system that will help you run your business any way you want to configure it. It, tr it truly is. I wasn't thinking about this. It truly really is from a real estate investor or invest, investment group, it really is um, a, a fascinating niche because you have no, you have, I love self storages. Uh, we're, you know, we already, you know, we already dealing with our um, concepts with EV charging. I see car washes. I'm seeing these things that, that investors are looking for. That's not so much um, work behind it. Right. So right. if a truck leaves, you don't have to go back in like with Airbnb, you have to have a maintenance crew come in, clean up, clean up the bathrooms, replenish a few things. Um, so I'm, it really is It is very in a, a good niche, very interesting for real estate investors who are looking at building these. What's it? I thought we know we're looking at what, 10 acres, about 150 to 200 parking spots for the pro park. Is that correct, Ed? Yeah. So our, our prototype would be five to 15 acres, 50 okay. to 150 spots. Real estate is very valuable, and the real estate that we're looking for, uh, as any lot owner would tell you, is going to be location, location, location. So, you know, you don't want your driver to have to go too far off the beaten path to park. Moreover, mo the lots that we are discussing, our customers are truck stop owners, uh, you know, as our main focus currently for us. But, but for but for a group like Pro Park looking to develop truck parking lots, we're mm -hmm. not fuel centric, right? So we're sort of fuel agnostic. Uh, the minute you put a tank in the ground and you start looking at that, the permitting aspect of that is outrageous and, and you know, just environmental constraints are, are over the top. But when you just pour them out and look, permitting is permitting, zoning is zoning, right? So I don't want to sound like a fool here, but to park a monolithic pad 
put a fence around it, put lumens, drop a little modular building on there. Now you're going to need services, of course, but that's a lot easier than just putting six tanks in the ground. I can tell you, you could, <laughs> you could part it, you could pour that parking lot, fence it, put lumens, get a building dropped on there and be in business before you might even get tanks in the ground permitted. And that's my experience from being a truck stop builder for a long time and having a lot of those uh, sort of developments under my belt. So this industry is just a lot easier from our aspect of what we're looking to do in regard to developing lots. And I know you're in conversation with individuals up in California. I know we're already talking to people of Oklahoma and Texas yeah. areas. What are some of the other areas that you that you feel that um, are good areas to, that if we have any investors that are wanting to come to us or listen to this podcast over time, mm -hmm. what are some of the areas that you find, um, Jim, that are really maybe some areas that are really needing more locations other than? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so obviously the interstate system, there's, there's been a tremendous change as I started out with earlier in the show, um, mm -hmm. the redesigning of the network. And it's constantly evolving. But, you know, the days 20 years ago, the independent operator, the idea was grab a load on Monday, run it across the country for two, three days, grab a load, come back. Those days are gone, you know, with the rail taking more market share. But you still have truckload capacity and that length of haul is changing and where to put that parking is changing. But the major corridors. If you look at the major manufact manufacturing centers, the major supply chain, uh, we have an advantage. In fact, we we offer some services um, where we go in and help folks that want to invest, help them identify where those are. Part of the way we can do that is because we build systems that are in the what we call the IoT space or that satellite and tracking systems on trucks and trailers. So we see the traffic patterns. We see where the trucks go. We see where they stop. But the major corridors, east-west corridor, 10s and 20s of the world, are heavily trafficked today and lots of need for parking. That's why look at Louisiana. I mean, just all along Louisiana, there's hundreds of parking spots. And there's no you know, saturation in Louisiana yet. But there's plenty of traffic in that east-west corridor um north south obviously the east coast you take the stuff going up to the middle it's all the major traffic lanes um i worked with a fleet that we were midwest centric and we haul a lot of meat product out of the upper midwest of dakotas and we built <laughs> power lanes north south from the dakotas and iowa minnesota wisconsin all down coming through the the middle of the country and then go all the way down to Houston. So there's there's needs. The upper Midwest right now is very short on parking. Um, mm -hmm. And as you move towards that Northwest quadrant, um, a lot of opportunities there. So there, there's no lack of space anywhere. And, and it's interesting as we work with different developers, they all have their niches. I know folks that they want to be right in the proximity of large uh I state kind of stuff next to the big truck stops. There's others that are, you know, they're in rural two lane highways. Think of all the big meat production plants, the big packaging plants, mm -hmm. truckloads yeah. going in and out of those markets where you have <clears throat> large um, traffic centers. A lot of drivers, we plan to what we call the drop dead delivery time. So every truck is trying to maximize every hour and the last load, the last stop on a multi-stop load is right to the last hour. So they're going to generally want to get out of that metropolitan area. So you'll see an, uh, an area around one hour perimeter to the big hubs where they want to get out of the traffic and then lay down, do their 10 hour break. And then they're going to start taking off again. So there's a little bit of an art as, as well as a science to it. And we can help folks that really want to explore the opportunity to, to monetize parking or get into the space. And then what ProPark does is, you know, they've run these operations. They've spun these sites up. They know how to prep the sites. 
Uh, they help with the promotion and the marketing. So that's where we come back and we say, we want to be the technology. Ed, they're the operators. They're going to help you. They've been in the business operating these types of businesses for years. And then we can help you figure out where and how to get there. Renee, uh, on what Jim just mentioned, the two lane highways with the little truck stops, the mom and pops, yeah. 10 spots, 100 spots, whatever. One of the things we find just in Louisiana, we signed up a family uh, that has five stops. What Pro Park working with Finn Park is providing to the that family is it it gives them the ability to create their own little internal network right they've got mm -hmm. a spot in vinton they got spots in new orleans they've got a spot in macomb they have a spot in tallulah so this this basically creates an inside uh, internal brand where they can easily say to a driver that's in vinton hey you going to new orleans um, we've got a spot in, in New Orleans East where you might want, why you might need to go, by the way, you can go on here and go to our location and reserve your spot now. So mm -hmm. for the small brand owners, which Louisiana has several brand ish sort of grouping like that, there are some folks that have five truck stops, 10 truck stops, right? It creates an internal network for them. Where they could, as they, uh, some could be in Shreveport, some could be in Lafayette, some in Henderson, some in Lake Charles, but it allows them to capture that customer if they're traveling inside of Louisiana to move them from one of their spots to another right inside of the Finn Park app, right? So they never lose that customer contact. And the last thing, without getting too techy on you, just kidding. <laughs> but, um, you know, you don't think of things like, Let's say you have a small family business and they have some capital and they want to get into monetizing some parking. You know, if you look at just the corporate structure, what if they say, you know, their lawyers and their accountants say, hey, I want an LLC for each of those individual parking lots. So in normal <laughs> software terms, that business, because I, I, I need your banking information, I got to send you a check. So those are individual accounts. We have a parent child view so that single operator can look at their whole ecosystem. Okay. But they can connect their managers and they can look at in one source, they can look at all of their sub operating units in the same system. So they have the parent view as the corporate mothership and they can also operate their individual locations because legally they needed to create different entities. If they don't, they want to throw them all under one entity, they can do that. But our system was built specifically to address that. I know it's kind of, you know, it's a nuanced thing, but it's really important when you're looking for a system that helps you run a business like that. No, it's kind of like real estate. I mean, when I buy, when I buy real estate, I usually put it in different LLCs. Right. Now, sometimes I might, I, I used to put maybe two or three in one LLC, but usually these days we recommend that people put them in different LLCs because it basically, you know, your profit and loss statement balance sheet and everything else. So this is, if you run this like a business, like we're, we're starting to really think about this, this is for investors out there that are looking for that, that little niche, that edge that they don't have all their overhead and um, expenses. And then you really can have this monetized across the, the, the United States in different places <laughs> and be able to monetize because you're providing the system, just like Airbnb and VRBO. They, they provided that network for real estate investors that said, oh, wow, good, this is pretty cool. I can buy this house. I can put it on this, mar this, this um, website and that's where I get my customers. And that's really what blew up with the Air, Airbnb and VRBO. So this is very similar. Yes. More ways that I'm, I'm looking at it, that it is really is the trucking industry. Um, Expedia, Airbnb for truck, truck market. And that's why I live in these marketplace solutions. And I, you know, I make a living building them because, you know, when you start to look at all the little nuances and all the, all these little things, become right. really important. So it's fascinating. You, the more you get your head into it and you realize if you could just sim make it simple and you can let me choose how I want to play, right. you know, then if the system supports me, it's, it's fun. 
right? If, if you got to create a full-time job and you got to get into how do I make all this stuff work? And I got to, you know, I got different companies. I'm trying to blend billing and accounting and deposits, all this stuff. Then it becomes a full-time job. And so our, our goal is make it easy for the investor. Give it something that we've got operators that are experienced. We can support the platform. We can, we've got a complete mobile app. So both sides of it. We've got the asset management and we and then we're working with those large enterprise fleets and we're pushing out to them and giving them the ability to integrate into our systems so we can really go after those 3.4 million professional drivers and that's not even the the local service guys right that are still mm -hmm. looking for that recurring in the long-term parking so we've got a great great platform great solution very proud of it obviously no, uh, no. We're proud to have guys like Ed and his team as, as a partner. No, I, I appreciate your time, and I, it really is. The more, the more that I that I get involved with Ed with this, the more excited I get because it's just I see it again because I'm on the road so much. For one, two, I'm looking at it from an investor's perspective that it, it really is solving a problem that we that we have in this world, and for investors that are looking for options right now that you don't have to have all the overhead you don't have to have employees you don't have to have all this stuff that really makes it makes growing a business hard this is really a very good and i think maybe one of our next things we might do ed maybe we can create mm -hmm. a pitch deck to kind of really just show from an investor's perspective how this is potentially something no. for yeah we have we have an investor pitch deck uh i'm not certain how you Folks that are watching this can communicate with us, Renee. I don't know what information you can provide in regard to contact information. Um, but yes, we have an investor pitch deck. Uh, we have a, a, a business case model that we can show someone their return on investment and so forth. So this is done. We're prepared to get out to the market on that. Um, you, you know, one of the things that, uh, Renee, that I would like to mention before we run out of time here is that we've grown our team now. Uh, we're very proud. So we, over the last two weeks, uh, actually since I went to San Diego and did a trade show, we've made some great contacts on the West Coast. So we shortly, within the next couple of weeks, we'll have someone on the West Coast that'll be repping our product, uh, all from California to um, Washington State, up to Oregon, in that general area, so sort of west of the Rockies, mm -hmm. she'll be in, or, or the Rockies, yeah, right, west of the Rockies. Um, we have someone that we're bringing on board in Oklahoma that's going to be a big account target person for us to start having chats with some of the larger groups that are based out of Oklahoma. She could mm -hmm. also cover Kansas and Texas. As you know, we have a Louisiana group, which you're part of. Mm -hmm. So we're excited. We have an Illinois area. We have someone up in Chicago that covers Illinois, Indiana, uh, uh, Kansas, the state, Kansas, and then also um, into Wisconsin and so forth. So we're, you know, we're growing. Our team is growing. We've had to really kind of figure out how to manage what Jim's created and how to sell. Uh, so we've been through a learning curve. And we're really kind of getting some some momentum under our feet now. Uh, we had a great chat with with uh, with Finn Park just uh, the other day, which Jim was a party to, where we feel very excited about a new marketing program that we're going to be proposing and putting together, which is going to have national reach, but we're going to keep it very local initially to see what you know, what, that, what are we getting for our money invested and how do we tweak that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see some mar new marketing things coming out from us. Um, we really want to start touching the driver with, and the truck stops with collateral material. So okay. for, so, you know, one of the things that we haven't talked about is the dollars, right? So average parking fee for a driver is about 30 to $35 a night nationwide would you say jim that's a good number yeah i mean there's some you know general parking spaces where you can go find a ten dollar spot in the gravel lot in the middle of nowhere yeah, yeah on yeah. average it's 25 yeah. 35. yeah 
we socialize 30 to 35 dollars for our our lot partners that come on board with us renee they always ask us what should we be charging right and that's a solid number i don't think anybody's going to say no to that considering that a lot of drivers get per diems and they get uh expense accounts to pay for such things and as jim was mentioning high value loads need to be in secure parking so asking 30 to 35 dollars for a secure parking spot is not a, a big ask yeah. we share that revenue with now remember these are our drivers that are on our app so right. for the part for the truck stop owner for us to sign them up 10 spots 20 spots 50 spots whatever this is an economic opportunity to them because we're taking our drivers that are downloading our app correct and we're driving them into your lot and we're sharing what we're collecting with you correct. and so we can discuss with anybody that's interested on the lot side how they how they get involved with us and what's our economic plan and our comp plan for them right. and a direct zoom call meeting uh or a, a phone call initially so it's very easy for a parking lot to get involved with us. Okay. Uh, it's very easy for a parking lot to get paid. And as Jim can tell you, it's very easy for a truck driver to download the app. Um, that's been made very seamlessly. Jim, so do you want to just chat about how a driver downloads the app real quickly, please? Yeah, the Thin Park app, it's um, available both in uh, iOS and Android. So go to the Google Play Store or go to the apple store and just search for finn park and um we we built the app to be driver centric first so every driver when they download the app uh you don't have to build usernames and all that stuff we build it off of the phone number of the of the mobile phone so download the app it's going to ask you to sign up and it's a basic profile and uh, you can search find parking you'll uh, add a credit card and drivers in business. They have full uh, access to it. And um, and then we support that with, um, you know, chat SMS messages to, you know, give them reminders and things. They can manage all their reservations, current and future, see their whole history. They also can build a, a profile. So they can load their truck information when an operator needs to know, what am I coming in with? So very, very easy for the driver. They go to log in, it's one OTP, one time password. So they just put in a confirmation number and they're in. Perfect. And the app is free. The app is free. The app is free. So I, I, just, I just want to you know, thank both of y'all for, for, for coming on tonight and just a wealth of information. It's helped me understand better really the, 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 the magnitude of really what Finn Park and Pro Park is doing. and. If, if an individual is interested in reaching out and getting any more information from us, um, you can reach out to my my websites, my YouTube channel, social media, um, manfreeconsulting at gmail.com. Uh, phone number is 504-344-3317. Ed, what email do you want to use um, for any contact with you? It's real simple. It's edgar, E-D-G-A-R dot Cologne, C-O-L-O-M-B, Michael Boy. People confuse the the M, they make an N. So it's C-O-L-O-M-B at gmail.com. Okay. Phone number is 504-564-7544. And I'm very prompt on returning uh, calls. Jim's available with us to join on a Zoom uh, demo or a Zoom conference where we can address any questions a prospective lot owner may have or a driver may have. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're open for business. And I'll put, I'll put more of that, Dave, that information in down in the subject line. And we will have, definitely we'll have more conversations and more podcasts coming up in the future on Finn Great. Park and our progress. So I want to thank both of y'all for coming on tonight. I think it was a fantastic opportunity for people to learn more about truck parking and what we're doing. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.